Fan Expo Canada, we are still going, still going strong, even if I can't speak, still going strong this lovely Sunday afternoon, and I just have to ask, how are you guys doing? You guys having fun? <laughs> Alright, because it's about to get a lot better. We're about to have a lot of fun out here, and you know what? We really are gonna, this is your time, we're gonna have some audience questions, and um, we have a microphone right there, right there in the middle. And you can line up, you can get your question ready. Uh, you can get it perfectly phrased for your moment at the microphone, and when you get to the microphone, I have a couple requests. <coughs> Keep it to one question per person, please. Let's make it an actual question and no special requests or anything. Toronto, I love you. Don't get too weird on me, okay? <laughs> um, and uh, also, if you are not directly at the microphone, I kindly ask that you squat down if you are physically able so you are not blocking the people behind you. See, I'm sure someone back there is going to appreciate that. Hi. Hey, sir. How are you? See? Yeah, squat down if you are physically able. Uh, my name is Aaron Sagers. I'm excited to bring these guys out here. But before I do, we actually have, even though you know Xeno Warrior Princess. We have sort of a refresher course, so let us throw to real. <laughs> Making her return to Toronto after 10 long years, I want you to make some noise for Renee Seasons 134 episodes, I believe. Yeah, we used to do t between 22, 24. 22, and one year 24 episodes. So we'd be busy more than nine months in. Yeah. And we'd watch all these sitcom actresses that'd be all over the pages doing, I don't know, the, oh, the publications. Yeah, they, yeah. Do, they had so much time to do other things in their lives. <laughs> We were living in New Zealand and, and loving it. Sitting yeah. there in our robes, drinking tea, going, well, We were wild. <laughs> having two female leads on a show, and especially like a, 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 a show with so much action, was notable at the time, but is still notable now. Um, did it sort of sink in right away that you two had to have like a very strong kind of camaraderie and have one another's back to sort of navigate this these 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 waters because it was such a unique experience at the time? I don't know. I mean, I, actually, no. We knew that this was totally very important just for enjoying your life, enjoying your career. I got really lucky though because it's not a given that you'll love and respect your, um, you know, your screen wife. Um, <laughs> I bet there's fleets of married people on TV <laughs> who bloody hate one another. But um, anyway, no, we worked together so much of our lives and we were young and hungry and uh, didn't know any better, so. We'd happily blow our eyebrows off or get crucified or whatever they wanted to do. We're like, sounds good. Yeah. A lot of the time, Lucy was mostly doing all the fights. 
So I would just sort of sit back and watch. Twiddle her little stick. Watch her do these fights and I'd be like, oh, did you see her man? Who did this amazing fight? And she's like, she's got a six foot stick. Nobody can get near her. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, oh, sorry, what's up? No, 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 jokes for that. Because, like, you know, you always, like, dodge the leg. And I'm like, whoa, if only I had, like, another five feet on me. I'd be doing that, too. <laughs> I mean, aside from, like, maybe Cher, there's, uh, Xena is up there as far as, like, one-word names, Madonna, uh, one-word names that just, like, resonate in people automatically know what it is and what it encapsulates and what it signifies. Uh, I know people ask about the legacy of a show, but when you're working on a show, like you hope that it gets picked up, and then you hope that maybe has a little bit of life afterwards, but like, when did it really sink in? Was it years later that you're like, people are going to always know what Xena means? I'll tell you when it sunk in. When we were standing out there, and I was like, oh my god, man. <laughs> doesn't matter what we do, we don't have to do anything. <laughs> but that is what we're going to be known for. Like 20 years later, that you all are showing up the world. Are there lots of little Xenas out there? Are there Xena children? There's two more here? today. Yeah. <laughs> Family, I know you're here. <laughs> With all the children, you know. Then yeah. she's like, name my baby, name my baby. <laughs> it's a lot of pressure. Oh yeah, right over there. And then I was like, okay, what are my choices? <laughs> she goes, Zena or Zora. <laughs> I go, hmm, that's a tough one. I don't want to be like really vain and go, name my character. <laughs> I said, well, Zena with a Z is my great aunt's name. I always thought it was just great coincidentally. She was like, no, Zena or Zora. <laughs> <laughs> and then what happened? You said that the older girl is also Zena. I don't know if you're telling the truth. How can you have two Zenas? You are Zena. There's a Zena. I said, she's, there can't be only one. <laughs> we all saw Highlander. <laughs> So you can call Xena two in the family, and Zena, it's like too many days. You know that Dr. Seuss story? You should name one of them Boxer and one of them Binky and one of them Oliver Bulba Stinky. Everybody knows the rhyme. I know I messed that up, no letters. So we... And then, the, yeah, okay, Xena. You can be Xena, you can be Zora. I, that child is um, lucky to be born into such a fun family. Everybody, okay, everybody's allowed to be Xena, yes. Uh, let's go ahead and throw it to an audience question. We got one uh, right up here. Over here, we're going to start here. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Welcome to Tron. <laughs> Thank you, doll. Um, this is actually just about um, the time that William Shatner came to the Zena convention and did all that filming. I'm, I, have you heard anything about what happened with that? Uh, oh, that was that yeah. happened with Kelly Smith? No, it's a different one. It was William Shatner, right? William yeah, Shatner he was, was interviewing different people um, when they were oh, going to different know. conventions. I don't know if they did anything with that at all. Yeah, I don't know. I remember. Just a shame because it was great. I couldn't make it to his talk, so I missed it. So I didn't see it. It's a tweeting. He's on. He's big on Twitter. And that guy likes Twitter, so tweet him. Uh, but okay, good question. Hi, how are you? Good. Yeah, the mic. Oh, okay. I thought we had another mic over here. Are you running back and forth? Are you seriously oh. running back and forth? <laughs> Hi ladies, uh, welcome to Toronto. So I have a more fun question, and um, so I'm curious, what are your current phone ringtones? Oh. Oh. Yes. Woo. Interesting. <laughs> I said don't get weird, Toronto. <laughs> so what are your ringtones? Nobody has called me in months. <laughs> I think mine's on silent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's terrible. <laughs> What's your ringtone? <laughs> it's Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Oh. That's a good one. That's a good one. All right. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. How are you? 
Hello, Ms. Lawless, Mr. Renee O'Connor. Yes, sir. Uh, so my question is, since there's kids in the audience, who would you rather, so three options, sleep with, marry, and kill? Gatticus, Hercules, or Crixies? So, I'm gonna give them a buffer if they don't want to answer that, because it's kind of weird to play that game. It hits on all the shows she's been in. I, I'm giving them a buffer. I'm giving you guys a pass on that. Uh, but, do you have a backup question? Backup question. That's you classified guys. information. <laughs> Would you be okay with your kids watching your show? Oh, do they approve of kids watching their show? Would you allow your own kids to watch your show? Like Xena or Ash vs. Evil Dead, that kind of stuff. Oh, you mean... <laughs> my kids were working on the show, so... <laughs> That's true. Um, yeah, because Daisy was working on... Uh, yeah. But my kids are old. Are you asking, should kids be allowed to watch Xena? Do you know? Yes. Right. Yes, of course they should. It's from a kind of gentler time, and in those days, dads might not have been so attractive. But I can't tell you how many young women are now telling me I watch it with my dad because they want their girls to be strong for the current world we're living in. You know. Yeah. So, I was really surprised about that actually, but it's, I realised in the last five years I'm hearing that so much more. Yeah. Hi there. Hi. <clears throat> Hi, I'm Frankie. Hi. Um, so, like, really quickly, I just want to give a shout out to all the Z Knights in the audience. I've been in line with you guys all day, and I've made so many friends. What's up, everybody? Yeah. They're really cool. Um, so, my question is, basically, if you, if they, if they made remain Zena today, do you think that the relationship between Gabby and Zena might come from the subtext to the? Opposite of subjects? <laughs> the text. The text. Oh, right. Yeah. Text. I think so. I mean, I don't know. Here's the problem. I imagine, absolutely. Once you burst that bubble, yeah. burst it. Then it's just like old chewing gum, the old relationship, settle down, argue over the trash. There's no, where's the, uh, where's the tension? Yeah. Mm, I don't know. They, you'd have to find a way that they would be, like a will they won't they kind of. Yeah, that's a good point. But someone was saying that they really loved uh, the relationship between Zena and Gabrielle, that it was a friendship, it was really deep. You know, and everything, um, sometimes what you see nowadays on television is more for, you know, entertainment or without the depth of the relationship. So I thought that was interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Cool. yeah. Thanks so much. There you go. But as far as dramatic storytelling, I mean, yeah, it's like the old moonlighting problem or like Mulder Scully. Like once you go there, it's it's done. Like well, there's no more, yeah. nowhere else to go after that. It's like it's relationships. Not that relationships are boring, but... <laughs> hi. Hi, Lucy. Hi, Renee. I just want to say you two look so lovely. Haven't changed that much in the last so many years. Um, my question is, what's your fondest memory of the late Kevin Smith? Fondest mm. memory? Oh, so many. It was such a kind, good man. And um, one of the later memories I have is going to see Danielle Cormack's play that he and she That's what I was going to say. Yeah. <laughs> and how I was backstage and I helped myself to one of the cookies in the jar and I was like, shit, this tastes horrible. Like, there's no way I can throw it off. You better finish it. Right? So I didn't know they were edibles. This is like... <laughs> And I don't, didn't know what had happened. Anyway, it started coming on. I'm sitting next to Kevin and Danielle in the restaurant, and I'm starting to freak. <laughs> I'm, and I'm, I'm thinking there's blood on the walls at the end. Of the terrible images. Uh, and three days later, when I was free and clear, I woke up and felt a pinned black like spiders up my legs. It just seemed like such a good idea at the time. Anyway, Kevin was with me and, he, and I was saying, those people, they're looking at us, they're looking at us. And he, and he did this queer little head turn going, 
<laughs> like it must be <laughs> Anyway, I didn't figure out till like two days later it was the damn cookie. How did you find out that it was the cookie? Because I rang Danielle and then like the next day I go, yeah. oh my god, I was up all night like avoiding ghost murderers in my house. <laughs> my daughter was sleeping next to me and I thought her eyes were open. <laughs> The worst, and that's what y'all are getting out of it. <laughs> I don't get it. It's probably how I got that. That's probably how you got through that play. That play was amazing. So that's what I remember about Kevin, and it happened to be connected to the Blue Room as well. That um, he was always just trying to do different things outside of Xena. And so he would do plays and stuff. And he was in this um, this really fabulous play with Danielle and. Um, I just remember being really funny because he had to put all these different characters on, different accents, run around his little shirt, you know, and it was, it was just entertaining. He was so much more intelligent than, you know, the Aries character than people want to think, especially New Zealand men were quite threatened, he was too damn beautiful and manly, and they wanted to think he was a dick, and I remember saying to my brother, no, he's a really good guy, and um, yeah, just a top bloke. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Um, I'd like to know what your guys' initial reaction or impression of each other was when you first met each other and first started working together compared to your reactions after you've worked together so many years. She was exactly like Gabrielle in that first episode. <laughs> And she was so complimentary that as a Kiwi, I would, would mistrust compliments. Oh <laughs> you only give those out at Christmas. <laughs> and I, just, and I was like, oh, oh, she's a bit adoring. This is going to have to break this. <laughs> but it was true. I was a fan already initially. You know, I heard all these things about Lucy before. I uh, was just like, tell me anything. No. No, it was things like um, that you know, she had been uh, doing things in Australia where she was uh, taking surveys of the road and she's climbed all these places and she's traveled the world, you know. I was like, oh man, she sounds really cool. And then just being kind of fascinated by Lucy because she speaks all these different languages. I don't know, how many do you speak? Five, ten, fifteen, twenty. <laughs> no, I learn several, but I speak really only one. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I mean, actually, talk a little bit about the evolution of your character throughout the show, because you know what we saw at the beginning versus like she went, she was went from like psychic to so much more. I mean, just talk a little bit about that. I mean, I think it was always supposed to be the compliment to the warrior. You know, that there was um, just this playful and goofiness that I loved about Gabrielle that was just really innate to, to, to who I am. And, and it, was, um, it was perfect to just go in and just sort of, I don't know, observe and laugh and be goofy. And I think they saw what Renee could do and they went, well, let's write for that. And now we want to give her a bigger story with the India where you poor thing, you had to walk all winter and bare feet. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was so idea. cool, so India. <laughs> and you see, that's miserable. <laughs> and I really do love the martial arts. I mean, I still yeah. love anything that's sort of in that genre of um, physical action and weapons. You know, I'm interested in it. So. Uh, it was a natural progress for me to want to, to be a part of the, um, the different uh, stunts and the different choreography because I was just waiting, I was chomping at the bed. Yeah. And it was natural that I should never be made to do a stunt ever <laughs> and just like, grudgingly went into it every day. <laughs> hey, how are you? Uh, hey, um, I'm Michael. Uh, love the show Xena, and for you, Lucy, uh, love uh, you. You're like awesome in um, Ash versus, versus Evil Dead. <laughs> Woo! Thank you. Uh, my question is for both of you guys: is uh, what are your guys' uh, favorite scene in Xena? Favorite scene? It's a lot of scenes. Yeah. <laughs> Scratch my nose. <laughs> I love the one uh, where you're like this evil stepsister. 
or something. That was so funny. Groundhog Day. Groundhog, yeah, it doesn't let it make me laugh. Like it's where it's just it's so goofy and ridiculous and it's like British humor, but it's it's such a blast to do and Lucy just commits and yeah, that one. All, with all the uh, with uh, Alex as well, Alex Tidings and yeah, the Cinderella one. It's difficult at times to just pluck uh, recollections out of there. But do you ever dream about being back on set or in production? Does it ever sort of enter your unconscious mind at all? <laughs> no, I think we nailed it the first time. Thank you for all the great memories all the way from uh, Beirut, Lebanon, where it was really important to have strong, empowering females on TV. You're both awesome and very inspiring. Uh, my question is a bit uh, more general than the gentleman before me. Uh, obviously, there were a lot of good episodes and a lot of story arcs. You went to China, to India, then the Twilight of the Gods, etc. Mm -hmm. So, my question is uh, if do you have any favorite episode or favorite story arc? <laughs> my, my yeah, favorite, but lots. My favorite lots. episode yeah. from uh, yeah, Day in the Life, from season two, where we see them yeah, 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 Day in the Life. That was Groundhog Day, yeah, yeah. That's what, the one I meant, because you reminded me of it before. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that was a good one. The deaths were two. amazing. No, they were beautifully produced. Yeah. I mean, just the sets and yeah. the story. And, Right. Oh, and you're going through like a... The debts, we, yeah, we both like that one a lot. In sickness, no, no, no. Again, there's a lot to pick from. The Ides of March, what was that one? Mm -hmm. Is that what it's called? Yeah, that was very good, that was good television. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was an hour of kick-ass, brilliant writing and, and realisation of somebody's script. It was good television. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. <laughs> The musicals were fun too, though. Yeah. Those are great. Hi, what's your question? Hi, Lucy Irene. Uh, my question is, if you two were offered the job of being a casting director for a Xena revival series, what actors would you like to see audition for the roles of Xena, Gabrielle, Aries, Callisto, and Jackson? Jesus, that's a lot to suddenly cast. You've got your work cut out, guys. Um, Who would we cast? I would look well, for the audition, audition because it all starts with the cast, and you, you two have that chemistry. So, who do you think would work in those roles? Could you even do it? Because it's like trying to pick someone to take on a job that, again, as you said, it's heavy burden. <laughs> 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 Uh, I, no, think I couldn't, you'd have to pick people who are 20, you know, in their 20s, sort of, if there's, I don't know any of them. <laughs> <laughs> I don't watch the shows that they're in. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> yeah, that, that's a tough one, yeah, casting, that's why casting directors are so important for a show, so, uh, I don't know, but, good question, interesting yeah. question, but let's move along. <laughs> Hi there. Hi. Hi, Lucy. <laughs> My question is for Wendy. Um, <laughs> do you have any fond memories of uh, working on the set of Darkman 2, and how was it to work with the late uh, Larry Drake? Wait, wait, what? Whoa! Not that us did. No, uh, Wendy, on the Darkman 2. Darkman 2, how was it to work on Darkman 2 in Toronto? By the and then what else about? Uh, how was it to uh, work with the, the late Larry Drake? Oh, Larry Drake. Yeah, yeah Larry Drake. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah, no, he was great. He was um, just out here doing doing his thing. Arnold Vosloo was the one that really captured me. I mean, oh gosh, this guy who was just charming and a wonderful actor. And it was, um, so I was kind of thrown into it at the last minute because I think they had to recast the part. Rob's like, yeah, you go on to Toronto. <laughs> and um, I loved looking around the city, went to Niagara Falls, saw as many shows as I could. So to me, it was a whole experience about being in Toronto. And that's what I remember about Dark Moon 2. Thank you very much. <laughs> there you go. Hello. Hi. Um, 
so one of the central themes that we see over and over in Xena is that um, the gods and immortals really like to mess with humans, um, or they just happen to do it while they're pursuing their goals. So of all of the ways that um, the gods, you know, intervened in Xena and Gabrielle's life, what was the most fun to, to work on? Hmm. Alex? Alex Tidings was yeah. always this joyful, lovely energy. Mm -hmm. um, not at all an airhead. <laughs> yeah. She's like um, Aphrodite, but also a cool gal. You know, yeah, cool she's an activist. She's yeah, yeah, she's great. But she, she was fun, fun, right? I've heard the video. They about a situation there. I thought, you know, rolling around in the sack with Kevin Smith wasn't bad. <laughs> One for the team, girls. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, at its core, what do you what do you think the show was really about? Was it about redemption? Was it a show about outsiders? How do you kind of look back and, and view the core sort of message or theme of the show? We've talked about that, that it just attracted people who felt marginalized. Um, but I think that the, the, the show was about redemption. It really was. It was about how do you sort of um, exercise those demons and move to something bigger and better, which, yeah. Yeah, I think underneath that, redemption is about feeling worthy of a second chance, right? It's about forgiveness and self-worth underneath that. So I think the uber, what well, the very deepest, most fundamental message is about self-worth and self-love, you know, respecting oneself so that you can go and respect others. And everybody finds out that they deserve that. That seems to be what fans take, that they deserved to love themselves, to forgive themselves, to have what they want, to heal themselves, to find yeah. love. Yeah. Toronto. I'd love to hear your thoughts on the city as well as the country in general, but before you do that, uh, Lucy, do you still kick off with your brothers and Renee? I'd love to hear your best injury story. Best what? Injury story? Injury story. Sorry. Injury story. Yeah, injury story. Do you kickbox your brother? I've never... I thought you used to kickbox with your brothers, that's how you got into it. No, that was all these fans coming up to me yesterday, this one going, Zena inspired me to like beat the boys up at school, and I was like... Yeah. Well, I wouldn't go that It's not nice. Sorry, love. Go ahead, Renee. Any injury stories, or...? Um... <laughs> oh gosh! Oh, Must have a uh, twisted ankle in there or something. There. Yeah, I only had. I didn't have much. I can't really say. Yeah, it was just a little sprained ankle, no big deal. But gosh, and I'll never forget Tammy. Tammy, who was the uh, stunt double for Gabrielle, and um, she's this little dynamo. But she and I miscoordinated a, a turn of a, the staff, and it hit her in the nose and oh. broke her nose. And she's like, she came oh, back the next okay. day. No, she's like, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm just me one. So you hear stunt people suffered a lot. <laughs> you caused the injuries, yeah, yeah. So how do you feel about Toronto and Canada? And I'll end it with that. <laughs> By the way, this is the That's most great. chill question delivery I think I've ever heard. You just cut, you scroll on up and it's like, hey guys, Toronto, thoughts? Uh, do you have any, uh, any impressions of Toronto? Oh, I love your city. I love the Kensington markets and Chinatown. I like my favorite place in North America. So, uh, yeah, and you're all, it's a huge town, but it's kind of spacious somehow, and people are relaxed, and yeah. So, so they, when you have uh, tourists come and they're staying in the Marriott at the Sky Dome, whenever the dome opens or closes, the whole hotel rocks. <laughs> California, I'm going, oh shit. I'm going to Toronto. I'm watching the walls here creak and crack and the gears are rolling over and I'm going, Phew. Yeah, it's crazy. That's, that sounds terrifying. Wow. 
like it. Hi, Lucy and Renee. I'm fanboying a bit right now, so this is hard. <laughs> you look fantastic, and I've been sitting here racking my brain to come up with a really interesting question for you, and I can't. So instead, I thought I would actually ask the audience a question. I thought it would be pretty awesome to hear all of the women and girls of the audience give their best Xena war cry. About time. <laughs> Fellas? <laughs> you are good sports, all of them. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, how are you? Hi, I'm good. I am actually one of those girls who would beat up the boys on the playground because of Zena. But to be fair, they were bullying me, so I was defending myself. So Zena actually helped me to overcome my bullies, so thank you for that. Yeah. <laughs> um, my question is though, so my favorite episode was actually Ides of March. I was wondering how significant was that episode for you guys? And was it as emotionally draining for you as it was for us to watch? <laughs> Is that the one where she got crucified? Yeah. And hypothermia. That was very hard on you. Oh, yeah. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Crucified in the snow, it might as well have been real snow. And there was a wind chill factor coming through there. And she's beyond blue. And she's like, no, no, I'm fine. <laughs> gone past shivering, you know, it was in full blown hypothermia. Yeah. Yeah. I that. I, isn't that the one with like, where we're wearing the, the garment that's kind of wrapped around us, we're sitting in the, the jail. And yeah, and Caesar's being and murdered at the same time. time. <laughs> right. Do you remember that? I remember it was like this really sweet moment and we're, we're just sitting there in like rags and been beaten up. It's just, she always had like gashes on, you know, on her eyes, you know, I'm talking about love, you know what? It was one of those moments, right? Always freezing. <laughs> Thank you. Don't beat up anyone else, okay? Like, it's gonna slow down with the beating up boys or girls. It's, just don't do that. Hi. Hi, I have a question for Lucy and Renee. Well, more of a thank you for every woman in this room, how you've represented us, and you're just our heroes. And we're so thankful, and that's all I want. So thank thank you. you very much. Hey Lucy, how are you? How are you? I have a question. So, my favorite villain is Kalisto. I was wondering who is either both of your favorite villains or who do you think was the most formidable that Zena ever took on? Mm. Uh, who is Claire's character? I'll, I'll, I'll do, right? Yeah. Oh, oh Altie's the favorite. <laughs> She's great. Altie's, yeah, she just wins. She wins on every score. <laughs> there is a person, there is a... Yeah. Yeah. yeah, she was, she was, she was like, please bring her back over and torture us. Please bring her back. <laughs> Put a spider in my mouth, I don't sure. care. Just bring Claire back. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. I used to look on the people. <laughs> this is a fun one. Uh, my name is Anastasia. I work for the Directors Guild of Canada. I'm in film in Toronto. Toronto <laughs> North. Um, what was your craft table like, and how far was it from set? Craft table. How was Crack it? table. Oh, crack table. Yeah. Uh, a few steps away. Yeah. <laughs> There is no craft tables it's in New Zealand. Yeah, it's not like in America or probably Canada where you have the crafty and there's just stuff everywhere from Cheetos to Doritos. And from one into nine. And yeah. Everything you're not supposed to eat. No, it wasn't like that at all. They would bring out trays of food at 4 p.m. It's tea time. Or tea time. You have morning tea and afternoon tea. Thank you very much. Yeah. Nice. It's fun. Hello. Hello. Um, if you guys didn't do, if you guys weren't on Xena, what would you guys be doing? Real estate. <laughs> that makes sense. Finances, accounting. Oh. Thank you. It's a great loss to accounting and real estate. Yeah. <laughs> 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 
Yeah, because I like to produce and do other things. And it's like, oh man, I should have gotten a degree in accounting. It's the worst. Sorry. No <laughs> I can't see sort of the, the alternate uh, universe of you as a real estate person with like your face on like the benches and everything. Accidentes. <laughs> I'm her accountant. Yeah, exactly. Books. Books. Hi. Hello. Oh, okay. Hi. Hello. Hi again. Uh, my name is Siobhan, and um, yeah, I'm here. And I have a Hi, Siobhan. Yes, yes, that's me. I met you guys, like, in Michigan. I'm from Detroit. I met both of you guys separately. I met you guys today, and now I can, like, go to sleep. And go to sleep. <laughs> but before you go to sleep, do you have a question? I do. I'm sorry. I do have a question. Um, I know everybody was asking about, like, your favorite episodes, but um, collectively, what is your favorite season? <laughs> what was the season with the dead? The one that ended in the dead. That whole season. Is that two or three? You guys need to help us out. What? Three. It was three. The most stressful season. I loved three. I remember. I like the whole Indian, whatever the Indian thing was. That was cool. It's just beautiful. I like the last season too. There was just so much like you know, throw it out there. This is it. That means nothing to the four people in the audience who aren't Zena fans. <laughs> Shall we try to be inclusive? <laughs> Thank you, darling. Thank you. Hello. Wow. Hi. Hi, doll. Hi. <laughs> Zena, carry off. Um, <laughs> would you together do a uh, Together, do another, uh, do a Zeta movie together. So would they come? Would they come? Together, do a Zeta movie. Cause we fans, Zeta would love it. All Zeta fans here would love it. Love it. I see a TLC special in the future. <laughs> Zena, I would love to do it. I wonder how Renee would feel about doing like a comedy movie. I just wanted to do a comedy movie just one more time. Yeah. Right? One more. And get Bruce and Ted back. Yeah, but I can't figure out if it has to be Zena and all the characters or if it just has to be the whole group again. That's what I'm trying to figure out. What do y'all think? Call it Lima, like, like, you know what I mean? <laughs> like on the Mag, 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 comment, mag Magazine. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, Lima. Oh, so we should do the Vima. There you go. And just, yeah. It's a character named Vima. <laughs> there you go. If you she know any, any producers, let us know. Hi. So something funny happened a moment ago. Uh, during the Q&A, everyone was addressing uh, Lucy and Renee as uh, Zena and Gabby. And my girlfriend said, who's Gabby? <laughs> so apparently, in the Italian Zena, you were Olympia. Yes. So my question is, well, you answered it. You knew that you were Olympia. And uh, Lucy, how would you feel if you had to call Gabby Olympia? Vima. Um, I have to be completely fine with that. You know, what's more shocking is that people were calling us that and we didn't even notice. <laughs> we just answer to it. <laughs> Olivia will get my attention though. Olivia? <laughs> Thank you. Hi there. Hi. I have a sort of a personal question. Uh, back in the time when on television was when there was a lot of sexual harassment and other type of incidents among the industry. Did you experience any of that kind of difficulty in your careers? And the second part is, on your show, did you try to use your positions of power, we'll call it, to protect guest stars? Or I mean, you two were very close, so maybe you protected the two of you know, the, just the two of you. She had to protect well, everyone from me! Actually, can we just go back to your first question, because that's a really important one. I will tell you, um, regarding sexual predation of any sort uh, in the working place, I have never, ever been touched, ever, actually, 
um, in the workplace in any way that was inappropriate. And I think, I'm not sure this is true, but I think because television is a much more cooperative medium, it's less, you cannot hide that stuff on a, you know, within a working set, because you have to, this, everybody's needed, nobody's um, shielded. That stuff happens in, you know, in seclusion. Um, whereas I believe movies are much more hierarchical and information doesn't go between the hierarchies, right? So, um, so I believe that's true. I have, however, had a rather unpleasant experience in a certain country when I was... They just throw you off a mountain and you sort of come paraponting down, or what do you call it? Paragliding? You're on, yeah, you know, yeah. And the guide kind of had a little, <laughs> got a little feel. And because you're way up in the air, I was like, what? Is he checking my belt? <laughs> I couldn't kind of figure out what had happened, but that's totally what he did. And then in the end, I'm completely discombobulated and weirded out and not sure what happened. And they were like, come on, get a photo, Lewis. And I'm like, uh, uh, I don't want a photo. And, and they sort of grabbed me into the photo. The photo happened, but I know that there was no smile on that. And I realized that's that guy's game. That's their game. And then they have a photo of their tri you know, trophies. But this was um, not a work situation. We didn't have anything like that on Xena at all. Well, it wouldn't happen in a culture Cause where you've got two female, you know, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's not that. Uh, but especially like with, you know, yeah, girls coming over from California, I don't know what they were expecting, but it was immediately obvious as soon as they walked into the read-through that, you know, it started from Lucy and Rob, you know, a beautiful married couple, and that was it. It was respect, and you do your job, and have a great time, and you're part of our family today from here on out. So there was nothing like that at all. Isn't that great? Okay. So we only have time for like two more questions. Let's end it on an upbeat note. And questions. Hi. Hello. Thanks for visiting. And I just want to say I'm really glad you both decided to not become accountants. Um, no, she was real estate though. Real estate and account. So I'm a costume fashion designer. My question is about your costumes. You guys had a lot of different looks over the seasons and, and different characters. So, like, how'd you guys get in out of those in and out of those things? Like, where was the zipper? Like, I can't find any closure. And like, like Gabrielle, your your green top, the trunk over the seasons. Like, was it stretchy? Like, what were these? I'm just wondering, like, how that worked. No, we were laced in every day. Yeah, you get an army of people to lace every part. Our foot, you know, your hands and the gauntlets. The the, yeah. the weaponry that would go behind you. Like Spartacus as well, like you can't see any zippers on There's none, no, it's, no. it's all, it's all, and it's um, sort of course of truth that was yeah. taught by the London Royal Opera, you know, whatever, uh, came down and taught them how to make proper course of tree, and um, the that was all the around. Yeah, no, there's no Velcro and, um, it's uncomfortable though, right? I know you always like, yeah, it's miserable, but it's awesome. But good, that, that's the thing. Suffer for the art, right? Yeah. yeah. All right, thank you. Thank you. And I think this is going to be our final question. Hi. Hello, darling. Hi. Um, thank you so much for being here. And um, also, one, just, it's just a sting you've been real fast. I love, Renee, I love you and Alien Apocalypse. Oh, man. Thank you. <laughs> and, and, thank you so much for everything that you do to raise awareness with your efforts with Greenpeace and everything else. Yay. Uh, <laughs> Mother Earth is really strong. Yeah, it's time, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, everyone's an activist. Thank you. Everyone should be. Yeah. Thank All right. Um, we will sneak in one more question. You're up. Let's go. Let's make it fast. Okay, we got to end it on a high because we just bummed them out. I'm reading Aaron's. Uh, yeah. Okay, I just wanted to know, um, before you started acting, um, how you got into acting, if there were any people who kind of inspired you or influenced you to want to get into that profession? Acting influences. <laughs> oh my gosh. You guys give her, yeah. Gotta give me something so we can okay. end on that. Okay, okay. Jack Klugman, Quincy MD. And I was like, that's what I want to do for my living. I want to be a forensic pathologist. And then I realized, I don't want to go to bloody med school for a hundred years. I just can play one on TV. And my earliest memory 
in acting was uh, being a costume character at an amusement park. And I was playing Porky Pig or Daffy Duck to Bugs Bunny, Foghorn Leghorn. So I was already getting trained, you see, because I was going to be right here. Well, see, see uh, Jack Klugman, that's, that's the Xena show I want to see. I want you guys to come back as like the odd couple comedy show. Like you guys living together, someone doesn't do their laundry. That's what I want to check out. All right, Fan Expo Canada, you guys are a lot of uh, fun.